Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics SAT Problems Playlist. Today I'm going to be working three SAT practice problems on the board, and these problems are coming from the 2010-2011 practice problem set that's available on College Board. So our first problem involves this number line behind me. We have variables S, T, U, and V on the number line. And we are, looking for, uh, we are looking for our answer choice, which gives us the greatest value. So let's take a look at answer choice A. So we've got uh, the absolute value of S plus T. We can find that pretty easily. S is just about between negative 2 and negative 3. We'll call S negative 2.5. And we are adding to it the value of t, which lies between 0 and negative 1, so we'll call it negative 1.5. We're looking for the absolute value. So negative 1.5, excuse me, this is 0 0.5. So we're looking for negative 2.5, which is coordinate s, plus negative 0 0.5. And this gives us the absolute value of negative 3, which equals positive 3. So we know answer choice A equals 3. So if we look at the other answer choices, we can see a trend. All of them start with S plus one of the other variables, or S minus one of the other variables. So we know that what we need to look for within the absolute value is the, is the largest number. We're looking for either the biggest number less than zero or the biggest number greater than zero because with the use of the absolute value uh, all of our final answers will be positive. So let's look for what is added or subtracted to s to give us the biggest value. So if we subtract v which is the greatest distance away from zero from s we'll arrive somewhere out here on the number line. So v gives us the greatest distance away from 0 in the positive, and s is the greatest distance from 0 in the negative. So if we subtract v from s, we should get the greatest number. So s minus v, so we'll call s negative 2.5 again, and uh, v will be positive 2.5. And this gives us the absolute value of negative 5, which will become positive 5. And we'll find that this is our answer. So in our second problem, we are given two equations, 3x plus 2y plus 2z equals 19, and 3x plus y plus z equals 14. And we are looking for the value of y plus z together. So we're looking for y plus z. Two, two variables aren't very easy to work with, so let's assign a different variable, j, to y plus z. Now we can start substituting a little bit. So 3x plus y plus z equals 14. That can be, we can substitute in j for y plus z. So we'll have 3x plus j equals 14. Now what we're looking for is the value of j, remember that. And let's simplify here to isolate 3x. 3x is equal to 14 minus j. And now that we have 3x, we can make a different substitution with our first equation. So here we have 3x plus 2y plus 2z equals 19. So let's put in 14 minus j for 3x. All right, and now let's see if we can simplify 2y plus 2z uh, so that we can make that in terms of j as well. So 14 minus j 
plus 2 times, we can pull the 2 out of y plus z, 2 times y plus z is equal to 19. And therefore, what we have is 14 minus j plus 2 times j, if we substitute j for y plus z, equals 19. So let me write that up here. We've got 14 minus j plus 2j equals 19. And so if we do uh, a little algebra here, we've got 14 plus j equals 19. And if we subtract 14 from both sides, we'll find that j equals 5. Now, this doesn't look like any of our answer choices, but remember that we are looking for j is equal to y plus z equals 5. And we'll find that our answer choice is E. So in the, our third and final problem for this video, we're given the equation y equals 2x plus 3. And the, uh, and the, the limit that x is less than 2. And we're trying to find all of the possible values of y. So let's start by finding what y is equal to when x is less than 2. So y equals 2. Let's find what y is equal to when x is equal to 2. So let's plug in 2 for x. So we've got y is equal to 4 plus 3. So y is equal to 7 when x is less than when x is equal to 2. And so to find out whether y is less than 7 or greater than 7 for all possible values where x is less than 2, I like to create a graph, to sketch a quick graph. So So what I've created here is a very quick x and y plane. So we're looking for our equation when x equals 2. That's what we're interested in. So we know that when x equals 2, our y value is 7. So it's about here. And the uh, equation y equals 2x plus 3, that's a linear equation. We know that the y-intercept is 3. And we know that it's going to be increasing by a factor of 2 with each x. So we've got a line that looks something like this. And so when y is less than 2, it covers all of these possible values for y. And that shows us pretty, pretty clearly that y is always going to be less than 7 when x is less than 2. So our answer is A. Thank you for watching this, this sample video of SAT math problems. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more math resources.